<laughs> um, okay, guys, I am. Yeah, I'm back, yes. Um, this video is going to be a tutorial on how to render out uh, solid wireframes uh, in uh, Blender 3D. And uh, if you do not know what Blender 3D is, it is basically a cross platform, uh, which means that it works on Linux, Mac OS X, and Windows. Um, cross platform uh, 3D package, basically. You can uh, it's it's a bundle of 3D animation software, 3D modeling software, software and rendering software. So it's it's a pretty amazing piece of um, software for to actually uh, be free, which is it's completely open source and free. Uh, and if you do not know what a solid wireframe is, this is basically a solid wireframe. Here it is. Uh, it's basically the model, the solid model, and then a layer on top of it with the uh, wireframe on it. So you can see both the shaded uh, version and the wireframe at the same time. And this effect is pretty easily uh, accomplished in Blender. I'll show you how to do it. So open up your model or model the model, I guess. I'll just use this model. And yes, for the people who watched my uh, previous time lapse video, this is actually that robot that I drew. Um, yes, the robot. Uh, it's pretty. Yeah, I was so proud of how it came out, so I kind of had to model it. And this is what I have so far. And I'm I'm on my way of being done. I have only the hands and the head left, which are those are pretty much the hardest things to do for me. So. Basically, to render out a solid wireframe, uh, you have to do basically duplicate the model and make a separate material just for the wire. So I will show you how to do that right now. So you select the object which you want to render out, and you press uh, Shift D uh, for duplicate, uh, and then you left click. And what you want to do then is uh, you want to go here to in the bottom bar here. Oops. Uh, and uh, you will probably be on editing, which is F9 editing, the tab with these on it. Uh, but uh, you will want to click on this button here, shading or F5. And uh, here you will see a lot of things. Uh, what you will be interested in is uh, the links and pipeline <coughs> box right here. And uh, you will have to, well this too, you see this too, this, will, this is what we have changed. The two means that um, because we duplicated the, because we duplicate the object, it actually shares the same material uh, as the uh, original object that we, that we duplicated from. And yes, it is two objects as you can see; they are just overlaying each other. Um, so basically, you have to click this and make single user. That means it creates a separate material for the ob object you have selected. So now we have a completely separate material for this uh, so we can uh, use this as a wire material. So first of all, uh, the thing that makes all of this possible is uh, th uh, the Z offset value right here. That's what makes everything here possible. And yeah, I have just the default material and if you want to know my rendering setup, basically I have this is currently a work in progress, so I don't have any serious thing. I just have ambient occlusion set to five and uh, some cameras, no lights. Uh, to, I usually have ambient occlusion on higher, but uh, as I just want to preview it as quickly as possible in rendering, I have to fire right now. So what you want to do here is after you have uh, made uh, the material sync user, you want to press wire. You want to press Z transparency, Z transp. Uh, and you want to change the color to whatever color you want your wireframe to be in. I'll change, I'll change it to black because I like black. Uh, and you see, if we try rendering this right now, uh, you will see how, how you see this, how weird it becomes, how um, it kind of, you can see the front of the Y, but can't see the other parts. That's because uh, the objects are actually at the exact same location, now, exactly the same location. So they overlap overlap each other. So you can see some parts of uh, one object, some parts of another object. So we will have to change that. And uh, the Z, Z offset value basically it um, it it takes the material and um, t gives it an artificial offset basically from the actual object. So it actually pushes the um, virtual. It pushes the uh, material uh, towards your from the object basically. So uh, you want to set this high or well 
is a common mistake is set it to set it too high. So for example, some people set it to maybe three and then try it then, and you will see what happens when you set three. What will happen is, um, yeah, this will happen. It's a complete mess. It's just insanely messy, and that's because it, it pushes it so much out that you can actually see the other side of it as well. So this is basically the entire wireframe, and it looks completely messy because this is a more pretty heavy, pretty heavy model. Although this will look better if you have a lower poly model, like a simpler model than this, but this is a pretty hefty model. Uh, so what do you want to do here? I have noticed that a good value to for basically all models are dot of five, but for this model, for some reason, I've noticed that dot of four works a lot better. So I'll set mine to dot of four, but you can you should probably set yours to dot of five because it it's just a general thing that usually works. And if you still can see all the wireframe, you can turn it up. Or if you can, if you see a little bit too much of the wireframe, you can turn it down a bit. It's just a trial and an error, basically. So you press render and render per frame. And what you will have now is basically this is the result. You you get this. And yes, I have a small issue right here, but that that I can fix it later. I don't feel like fixing it right now. And there we go. We have just rendered this on the wireframe. And while if you think this is pretty uh, hard to make or pretty you know, time consuming, which I think you shouldn't think, but still, if you do, uh, there are scripts you can download for Blender, Python scripts with you, which you can uh, import into Blender, and it's basically like a button which does this for you. But I find the, I find this method much more easy, much easier, uh, because you can customize it as much as you want, because. For example, let's say we think the lines are too thick in here. Let's say they are too thick and too too strong. What we'll do then? We can go down here because we have the Z transparency on and Z offset on, so we can actually take the alpha value right here and turn it down like to dot dot two or something, and we can render it again. And what what you will see now is that uh, the wireframe is actually really vague. It, it's much more it blends in much more with model as the op opacity is way down on it now. Uh, as this is also a nice effect you can have to just make a subtle but still a cool effect. And uh, you can also change the specularity as specular. Uh, obviously, you can have what it reflects of to red or whatever. You can also change the color of the wireframe to whatever you want, say so you want it blue or something. Um, you can also you can do a lot of things with this. It's um, basically this entire material. You can modify it to suit your your commands, I guess. So that's pretty much this tutorial. It was a pretty quick tutorial. Uh, it's it's a really simple thing to do actually, and um, yeah, uh, I will. I guess I'm done. I guess so. Uh, thanks for watching and. Um, I will see you in my next video, which will probably be about this model, that's when it's finished, I'll probably make more a uh, video about it. I was actually going to shoot a time lapse of it, uh, modeling it, but I had some issues with it and I lost the footage, so I couldn't do that. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you later. Bye.